Well, you know, I just got to get this thought out of my head before it goes out of it. I mean, I don't know where it goes. The dream catcher there. <laughs> there was a dream catcher. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the dream catcher is right there. Um, it catches my thoughts while I'm dreaming. And the one that's currently captured my imagination. Now, this one's a big one, so you might want to um, put your feet firmly on the ground because we're going to debunk gravity. I know, I know. Uh, uh, uh. That's pretty hard to debunk something that doesn't even exist in the first place. But fortunately, we brought beer for that. <laughs> so we can do science. The sugars are fermented. The yeast have pooped out alcohol. The alcohol is palatably pleasing because it kills off the germs in what would otherwise be stagnant water and makes it healthy. So I've just created a health tonic so that I might uh, sit back and... What the fuck? I was going to debunk gravity right here. So we'll just do this in a backwards fashion. What is the law? Of, I'll just unplug that. Even though I've got gold battery storage, um, the law. What is the law of? I don't know conservation of energy. Let's just start with uh, Newton's laws. We'll just start with um, for every action, there was an equal. And opposite reaction. Now think about that twice. You know, I'll even say it because my name is Vincent twice. Vincent twice. I used to fucking crack up at that when I watched Sesame Street where I was getting indoctrinated with shit about Earth, 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 Moon, <laughs> Moon, Earth, Moon, Earth. <laughs> hey, Bert. Why have you got that banana in your... Oh, hang on. Hey, Ernie! Why have you got that banana in your head? Hey, Bert. It's to keep the crocodiles away from Sesame Street. Ernie, there are no crocodiles on Sesame Street. Yeah, well, the banana in my ear is doing a good job, isn't it? All right. <laughs> That's enough of that childhood indoctrination bullshit out of my system. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You stick a banana in your ear, you'll get no crocodiles on your street. You stick crocodiles on your street, you'll get a banana coming out your ear. It's true. It happened one day. Like, no shit. Somewhere. In one of the many, many possibilities of existence in this multiverse that we exist upon. If it's possible to happen, there's every chance. Eventually, it will happen. So, whatever you do, Keep bananas in your ear, or you get fucking crocodiles in your street. So, for every action, <laughs> except for bananas in your ear, I said ear. Yeah, you know, I know when you say your ear, it sort of sounds like your rear, but do not put bananas in your rear. Makes them taste like shit. 
So, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, think about it. Think about it. Take the banana out of your rear and think about it. Every action as an equal and opposite reaction. And the converse law of that, I think Newton also said this, an object at rest remains at rest unless a force acts upon it. So let's put these two, or well one and one together to make two. The first one says, It will react to the action. The second one says, without an action, it'll stay at rest. And the third one, I believe, basically says, because it's pretty simple, so shit, is that an object in motion remains in motion unless there's an opposing force. I don't think it necessarily has to be equal. There just has to be an opposing force to eventually slow it the fuck down, like friction, for example. That's probably actually involved in the first two. We've, we've described that in the first two. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. An object at rest remains at rest. So therefore, if we drink some beer, we'll get through the rest. I would just like to thank the brewer of this beer. I am welcome. Bloody hoof. Right here. So, let's continue with this. Let's see this out to its logical conclusion. <coughs> People assume gravity is a force. Gravity, I love to say it with that, gravity is a force. It's not a force. You assume it is a force, but what is it really? It is a reaction. It is a reaction to the first law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if you leave an object at rest let's say I just left this at rest it will remain at rest but if I apply a force oh, saved some for Ron The liquid was seeking its level the whole time. The only thing stopping it was my gullet slowly allowing a little bit at a time. But had I not picked it up and applied a force, it would have remained at rest and I would be slightly less inebriated than I was several seconds ago. So, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. An object at rest remains at rest unless you apply an external force. So, if gravity is a force then something had to apply a force in the first place for it to react to it's pretty bloody straightforward I mean really bloody straight forward
<laughs> it's kind of ironic, really, in a way, isn't it? When I was a kid, we had two types of cars. The winners and the losers. And the losers were Ford. <laughs> but the winners were Holden. <laughs> and it's kind of ironic, really. And like, if you're holding something, it can't go forward. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just a stupid... Stupid distraction from what the fuck I'm trying to talk about. Holdens. <clears throat> Peterborough. Mathis one day. Brocky. All right. Okay. So. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So gravity, if you leave something at rest, it remains at rest. So if the earth is spinning through the vacuum of space, it's spinning on its axis with a surface speed of 1.35 Mach, which is, a Mac is the speed of sound. Ugh. If it's moving 1.35 times the speed of sound. Is that Bruce Springsteen out there? I haven't seen him since the 80s. I'll get through this video. I'll get through. One point three five Mac is the equivalence of a thousand and forty miles per hour. One Mac is seven hundred and sixty seven miles per hour. I think that's how they come up with the aeroplane being to seven six seven. It's all good. We I don't care like about what The name of planes come up to mean Mac. What we're really talking about here is the actual real speeds and forces. So let's go back again. Newton's first law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction and an object at rest remains at rest unless you apply another force so the action is to lift a thing as people love to uh, give me a bit of a hard time about on the last modern day debate thing that I had with T-Jump where he kept Hammering away, what is the force? What is the force? What is the force? Well, it's a putting force. And so a putting, put means action. You have put something somewhere where it wasn't. So you've applied a force to put it somewhere else. And so if you put it into a vacuum chamber, then you've applied a force. And so the equal and opposite reaction to that is, well, you've put it there. The reaction is it will drop. That's basically the laws of physics. If you didn't put it... <laughs> I know. I, I never expected that I'd be the one to come up with a new law a new uh, understanding of the laws of physics. But apparently now I'm responsible because I got put on the spot. It's now a law of putting. <laughs> it's not P-double-O-T. <laughs> no, it's not putting. It's like at the other end. Putting means basically 
However, you have elevated it and injected it into an environment. You have put it into a place where it would otherwise not have been if you had left it alone and not applied a force. So putting is basically the law of applying a force to something. Don't put it otherwise. I could put it completely differently, but I'm nearly out of beer. I'm out of beer. So the law of putting <laughs> basically means leave something the fuck alone. Don't apply a force to it. It will remain at rest. Apply a force to it. It will react to that. And it will react with an equal and opposite reaction. So either you leave things alone, leave them at rest, they will remain at rest. You apply, apply a force. To apply a force is to put a force upon it. And so you are putting that force into an environment where this thing didn't even exist before whether it be a single molecule, which was ridiculous. That's the one that T-Jump come up with because he was completely addled. He had no idea what he was even talking about. He had no idea. Oh, well, let's just put some gas into in a vacuum. Oh, hang on. Oh, oh, geez. Um, yeah, all that gas is just going to escape into the force that creates the vacuum in the first place. So he just, oh, a single molecule. And then he agreed with me, yes, we uh, remove all the force creating the vacuum. A force creating the vacuum, mind you. A force. So that now the vacuum state is at rest. And then you put, <laughs> you actually put a molecule of gas into it somehow. I don't know how you do it, but you put it there. It's going to react. So, far out. Who'd have thought a ridiculous debate, well, it's actually a very sensible debate, actually, about the non-existence of space could have come up with a whole entire new idea, a whole new concept, a whole new way of interpreting Newton's laws an object at rest remains at rest. An object in motion will remain in motion unless another force is acted upon it. And the motion and the object at rest will remain at rest unless you apply another force. And now we have a name for that force. Putting. <laughs> and you can't have your pudding if you don't have your meat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll meet up again soon because this is far from over and this debate is raging. <laughs> I'm Flat Earth Aussie Roscoe, Iron Horse, and all the rest.